A horse may be born of registered standard bred parents, but until a standard bred horse has his parentage verified by one of the USTA's 12 ID technicians, he cannot race, have registered offspring, or even have his ownership transferred. We were able to ride along with veteran ID technician Keith Hamilton on his travels throughout his New York territory. New York being one of the seven states that Keith has served since 1974. With 120 miles already under his belt for his first appointment, let's take a peek at how the day began. En route to Mark Ford Training Center. The track identifier at Saratoga was very astute and uh, discovering a horse racing there did have the correct identification number, but uh, the listing on the printed identifier sheet that they do uh, check off numbers with as horses uh, enter paddocks and of course prior to going out on the track to race uh, it was discovered there's obviously an error in the registered color and perhaps markings. With nearly 38 years and over 3 million miles under his belt this ID tech will tell you it's all about scheduling. I told the judges that when I was in the area I'd be happy to go to Mark Ford's and check on that and then we'll have the records change in, in Columbus if necessary. From uh, Mark Ford's today we'll be going to Cameo Hills which is a standard bread nursery. Uh, the Jones family manages a, uh, some of their own brood mares and outside client horses for New York breeds. We'll be doing foals at uh, Cameo Hills this morning and then traveling off to the New York based Winback Farm which is a multi-jurisdictional uh, breeding farm, if you would. The first stop at the Mark Ford Training Center is upon us. The officials at Saratoga have requested further identification, and here we are. Do -do 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 -do. Buenos dias, senores. Hey, I got to look at Don't Worry, Be Happy. You know where that guy is? All the way down. All the way down? What you doing there, old kid? Well, you do have the right number, but your color's a little off. Blaze, lower lip, which of course is. And left front ankle, which is technically a left front half leg. We'll make that change. We're going to change his color to chestnut on our system. We're going to change his marking from left front ankle to left front half leg. We're going to call his left hind marking a pastern high and back. Good call on that. Uh, his registered color is indeed chestnut rather than bay. And the markings will adjust. But... Uh, as evident here, he was assigned 7 FB82. It is. There's no question that this is don't worry, be happy. Prior to departure, Just Keith checks in with Mark to make sure that no further horses need his Take attention. The next call at that point is the home office. Keith makes the necessary changes in the system with the USTA's assistant registrar, Barbara Brooks. Okay. Name of the horse is don't worry, letter B happy. Don't worry, be happy. Registration 7, F as in Frank, B as in boy, 82. Okay, got it. It's registered as bay. The correct color is chestnut. Chestnut, okay. The blaze is correct. The lower lip white is correct. Left front is half leg, not ankle. On to our next stop. With on time on our side, stop. it's off to Cameo Hill. I did tell Steve Jones that we would be there somewhere between 9.30 and 10, and hopefully we'll be pulling into his farm at 10 o'clock straight up. I pride myself on that. Hey, I'm three minutes early. Hey, I'm at the top of the hill. Get out of bed. Let's go to work. All right, bud. We're going deeper into the Cameo Hills farm. We are out all four seasons uh, doing our thing, and uh, snowstorms probably make it tough at times uh, getting around. And uh, rainstorms make it a little miserable, too, if you're out in the sheds. 
Bring on the babies. With a barn full of foals, preparations are made to begin the identification process. <laughs> Let the fun begin. This is our carbonized uh, DNA collection form worksheet, if you would. We record the horse's identification number, the method of identification, which is predominantly freeze branding, obviously, the parentage, the gender, color, and markings. Here's our first candidate, guys. Uh, Mother Jamie's character, Sire Art Major. An identification or freeze brand number, if you would, is 5J761. And we're at Cameo Hills. Now, while we go inspect this colt for markings, we will shave a spot on his neck to accommodate our identification on the right side of his neck, obviously. And while we are doing that and collecting a DNA sample on him, we will uh, be cooling down the tools. We scotch tape the DNA sample to the form. Later on, we separate. One is for our records, the other being sent to the lab with the hair sample so they can improve the parentage. We pre-cool the shaved area with pure alcohol. My assumption is it makes for a better brand and doesn't allow the tool to stick. 5J761. I like doing uh, paperwork, of course, because the more times you can repeat this number to yourself, the less chance of ever making an error. Why do we pull hair? It's the DNA. DNA paternity testing is 99% plus reliable. A horse's DNA is completely unique, even in identical twins, and therefore is an accurate measure of biological identity, just like humans. In our industry, both the stallion and mare have already been sampled and will be compared to the foal's DNA. We do send all of our samples to an accredited lab for confirmation of parentage. We advise our members that you must allow at least two weeks for the results of the testing. We have more exciting things to come, but you'll have to catch us next week for our next episode of How It's Done.